Welcome to What's That About Podcast, investigative journalism on trending topics with an urban perspective. We also cover some topics that aren't trending if they need to be addressed. Today, we will be discussing the massacre that took place in Buffalo, New York, the Great Replacement Theory, Fox News, and gun control. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe, and let's build. And remember, I'm not only your host, I'm also your brother. I am Brother Nice. When I signed up to do this podcast, I knew a time would come where I would have to speak on something that was disturbing and even hurtful. And this is that time. Imagine leaving your house to go see a local supermarket and never returning home. Well, that's exactly what happened on Saturday, May 14th in Buffalo, New York. The 10 faces that you see on your screen right now all left their house to go to their local supermarket and never returned home because they were shot and killed for no reason other than being black. Now, before I started to make this video, I had never heard of the term, the Great Replacement Theory. And I'm pretty sure most of you out there have never heard of the term, the Great Replacement Theory. But it's a real thing. And this is the way that some white people think. Now, before I explain what it is, we're going to hear from Tucker Carlson from Fox News and let him explain what it is. Say it, that's mm. true. Let's say that again for emphasis because it is the secret to the entire immigration debate. Demographic change is the key to the Democratic Party's political ambitions. In other words, you're being replaced and there's nothing you can do about it. So shut up. <laughs> I mean, they're trying to change the population of the United States. And they hate it when you say that because it's true. Our country's being invaded by the rest of the world. Let me just state unequivocally, the country's being stolen from American citizens as we watch. In political terms, this policy is called the Great Replacement, the replacement of legacy Americans with more obedient people from faraway countries. Fox News. I would say shame on you, but we all know you have no shame. When you let someone like Tucker Carlson get on your network and preach this great replacement theory, and then you hear about an 18-year-old boy typing up a 180-page document with the same ideology, driving 200 miles to kill 10 black people, do you take any responsibility for throwing gas on a fire? And Tucker Carlson, after 400 plus years of free labor, dominance, Jim Crow, racism, police brutality, and unfair imprisonment. After all of that, that's still not enough. You still want more, huh? You know it's not in my nature to hate anyone, but I have a very strong dislike for you and anyone who thinks like you. Now, since I know very little about this great replacement theory, we're going to go to CNN for them to explain it in further detail. The Saturday afternoon massacre at a Buffalo supermarket is more than just the 198th mass shooting in America this year. It was, according to an online manifesto attributed to the suspect, a terror attack, a hate crime rooted in something called Great Replacement Theory, which has spurred multiple slaughters in recent years. Now, it's become a sickeningly predictable script. The 18-year-old's alleged online radicalization began in the recesses of the internet, moving, according to the posting, further to the right, to the point that he became a self-described fascist, white supremacist, and anti-Semite. Embracing the conspiracy that white people are being systematically replaced in America. Some alleging it's part of a Jewish-backed plot involving immigration, intermarriage, and violence. Now, he got so high on hate that at some point he drove from his 90% white hometown, targeting a black neighborhood in Buffalo more than 200 miles away, armed with a weapon of war, live streaming, as police say he killed 10 people. This is not a lone wolf case, but a copycat killing, echoing the young white man who's charged with driving hundreds of miles to a Walmart in El Paso to kill 23 people, mostly Latinos, in 2019. To the man accused of slaughtering 11 worshipers at Pittsburgh's Tree of Life Synagogue in 2018. Now, they've all pled not guilty and are waiting trial, but like the self-described fascist who murdered 51 people at a mosque in New Zealand, they cited replacement theory or immigration invasion or fears of white genocide. It's an old anxiety about multiracial democracy dressed up in new fatigues, an extension of the race panic pushed by the KKK, the kind of racist bile pushed by the likes of Mississippi Senator Theodore Bilbo, conservative populist Democrat who defended racism in tomes like 1947's Take Your Choice, Separation or Mongrelization. A more contemporary connection comes from a French book hailed by white nationalists, but 
You probably didn't notice the proliferation of replacement until you heard tiki torch wielding white nationalists shouting it at the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! Now, I want to be clear. Only the alleged shooter is responsible for his actions. But this 18-year-old did not invent the ideas that supposedly influenced him. He was indoctrinated. And unfortunately, this conspiracy is not nearly as fringe as we might like to think. Now, take this APNORC poll showing that last December, nearly half of Republicans agreed to at least some extent with the idea that there's a deliberate intent to replace native-born Americans with immigrants. How the hell did that get in the groundwater? Well, here's one tributary. New York Times analysis finding that more than 400 episodes of Tucker Carlson's primetime Fox show amplified the idea that a cabal of elites want to force demographic change through immigration. Like this. I know that the left and all the little gatekeepers on Twitter become literally hysterical if you use the term replacement. If you suggest that the Democratic Party is trying to replace the current electorate, the voters now casting ballots, with new people, more obedient voters from the third world. Now, he's not the only one. That poll found that belief in replacement theory is most likely if folks get their news from far-right cable channels like OAN or Newsmax, followed by Fox. But partisan media is more than the gateway drug. It increasingly gives talking points to politicians as part of their play to the base. Think New York Representative Elise Stefanik, the number three House Republican, put out a Facebook ad in September that invoked replacement theory, saying that Democrats wanted a permanent election insurrection through amnesty for undocumented immigrants. Trump backed Ohio Jet Sea GOP Senate nominee J.D. Vance has also trotted out similar appeals. Florida Congressman Matt Gates has defended replacement theory while calling the ADL racist. And the recently subpoenaed, big lie backing Congressman Scott Perry bought replacement theory to a House hearing. Look, we can have vibrant debates about the right levels of immigration and assimilation in America. But let's be clear, invoking the great replacement is not part of that. It's not intended to be. It's a dog whistle that everyone should be able to hear by now because there's a growing body count behind it. More evidence of violent resistance to multiracial democracy in America. And that's your reality check. Now here is why some white people are mad. There's a projection that in the year 2045, that white people will become the minority. So this has caused some of these mass shootings. So instead of white people having more babies to increase their population, they would rather kill black people to decrease our population. Now, what kind of thinking is that? Now, let's talk about the shooter from the massacre in Buffalo, New York. First of all, I wish news outlets would stop using the term alleged shooter. This man killed 10 people and shot three others on his live stream. Why are they still using the term alleged? That's a whole nother story. But listen to this report I'm about to read to you and tell me this isn't crazy. Last June, state police investigated Gendron and ordered a psychiatric evaluation. After a day and a half in the hospital, he was released, authorities say. Afterward, he did not remain on law enforcement's radar. The timing of the gun purchase, along with a clean background check, raises questions about why a police-ordered mental health evaluation would not have appeared on his report. I have an issue with this report. This man had a psychiatric evaluation. But when he goes into a gun store to purchase a firearm, that don't come up on a background check? Talk about negligence. Somebody really dropped the ball on this one, and because of it, some people are dead and others are in pain. I also have an issue that an 18 year old could even walk in a gun store and buy a gun. Most of the 18 year olds that I know are not mature or responsible enough to own a firearm. I mean, think about this. You have to be 21 years of age to purchase alcohol. Yet at the age of 18, you can walk into a gun store and purchase an AR-15 assault rifle? Now make that make sense. I'll wait. 
Now let's talk gun control. The Second Amendment says it is our constitutional right for all law-abiding citizens to be able to bear arms. So if you ask me am I in favor of gun ownership, I'm going to say it depends. If you tell me you want to buy a handgun like a Glock or a 380 to protect your home and your family, I'm going to say cool. But if you tell me you want to buy an assault rifle like the ones that you're looking at on your screen right now, I'm going to say what the hell for? What country are you about to go to war with that you would need a gun like this? I will also remind you that since 2012, there have been 11 mass shootings, all with this one assault rifle right here the AR-15. This is the same rifle that was used in Buffalo, New York to kill 10 people and shoot three others. So if you ask me, am I in favor of the sale of assault rifles? I'm going to tell you absolutely not. Now, before I end this video, I want to pay our proper respect to all those who lost their life in Buffalo, New York on Saturday, May 14th. We could only hope that change will come because of your sacrifice. I want to say thank you for watching this video. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe, and let's build. Peace, love, and progress. And remember, I'm not only your host, I'm also your brother. I am Brother Nice.